What is going on, Captains? It is Doc Lightning back here with another video. I know it's been quite a long time, but I really think you guys will enjoy the work I put into this one because this has been a build I've had in my head since, honestly, the just after the announcement of the Delta Recruit rerun. Not that the Delta Recruit had, you know, anything to do with the build per se, but it gave me an idea for a new science tune that did something different than my main, so I decided to run with it, and so far, I must admit, it's actually worked out surprisingly well. Now, a couple things to note ahead of time. Number one, this is not a meta build or anything of that type whatsoever so it's never going to hit the stupid numbers that your plain old exotic Cytorp and everything will two the way this is set up you can do it on other ships and once I get the build completely finalized this is just iteration one once I get the build completely finalized I'll probably make a video going over how to adjust it to be a little more budgety. But as it stands, the build that I've done here is not cheap by any definition. It is a very niche build. It's not easy to pilot, survive in, or all of that. But it is a very fun build, and I'm very excited to share it with you guys. And lastly, I do have a parse with this build as it stands in the current iteration. That's why I'm making a video showing my progress so far. Probably be an update in about a month or two when I've finished off some other stuff. Um, but I was not happening to record that run. There was a bunch of other stuff going on that night. And I didn't really think about making a video until after I saw it did so well. I was not expecting this build to do as well as it did until I got two or three more traits unlocked. I'll be perfectly honest. So, with that said, welcome on into the video. This is going to be a build on the Vulcan Experimental Scout ship, otherwise known to much joy and laughter of my friends, the VSS Doc's Brain, because... Anybody that knows me knows I'm half crazy, so I'm sure just by looking here you can kind of get a grasp of what I'm doing and think I'm crazy already, which I'm not going to argue, I probably am, but like I said, it's not an easy build, but I've had more fun with this build, just more raw fun and joy out of this build than I've probably had out of saving up to finish off my main science tune in quite a while. Because he's at the point, anything that's going to give him up an upgrade is going to be promo ship or lockbox ship. And, yeah. So I pretty much just kind of am saving up EC on him slowly and leaving him off to the side for the moment until I get another ship I want to try on him since he has the most toys. But anywho, um, back to here. This is a Dusai Cannons build, which is relying on so many weird combos, it's actually kind of stupid. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to lay out the build in its current state, and while I go along... I'm going to tell you if you truly have the funds and the means to copy this, I'm going to tell you what I think I'm going to swap out in the future for better results. Like I said, this is a build in progress, so take that it as you will. So, let's start from the top. Um, crits are not too bad, accuracy is great. This thing's going to be squishy. This thing's going to be insanely squishy. If anything breathes in your general direction, unless you happen to kill them first. 
you are going to die. I will warn you of that ahead of time. You will not get through any type of elite content without a very solid tank. Advanced content, you're probably going to die a couple times unless you have some teammates with you helping you along. The build is still going to do really well. But just another fair warning. So, starting from the top with our forward weapons, we have the Saboteur Delivery Vehicle Photon Torpedo, epic out. You can't re-engineer it, that's why it's kind of a hot mess on the modifiers, but honestly it performs very solid nonetheless. I'm using the Saboteur set for a multitude of reasons. Number one, as much as I love and adore the DMQ, which would be the Dark Matter Quantum, and some other stuff related to more meta-type building, I do get tired of it. I'll be honest. Will there eventually probably be a variant of this build with the DMQ? More than likely. But just because of how weird this build's being anyway, I thought I'd try something different for a change, and I must admit, I really enjoy this torpedo. I really do. It hits fairly hard, and the delayed explosion with the three-piece is beautiful. So, we got that on there. Next, we have the Saboteur Disruptor Dual Cannons, which the reason I went with this set in the first place is because I'm using Krieger Wave Disruptor. Now, for those of you that haven't heard of Krieger Wave Disruptor, the proc on them is that you get 25 drain and control expertise for 10 seconds. Now, in my head, this is a deuce I build. I've got to play the balancing act game because neither my cannons nor my science is going to be top-notch. That's why folks struggle to put one together sometimes because you've got to sacrifice on one end or the other and neither of them is going to be the best at what they do. The key is getting them balanced to a point they're good enough together to make a solid result. So, the proc on these is a 5% chance for plus 30 drain and control X for 12 seconds. Now, yeah, they're only dual cannons, and I can't re-roll them either. To be fair, the roll on them is not bad. I just have been a sucker for damage mods recently. Don't, don't ask me why. Plus, in my head, I'm thinking, I'm not going to have that much crit chance on my energy weapons in this thing. So, I don't know. I'm just... Like I said at the beginning, I'm literally just trying different things at the moment just to have fun, which is the point of the game in the first place. So we got these. Oop. Hit my space bar and off goes my photonic officer. Nice. Nice to know you're awake, little fella. Anyway, so the other part of these is that firing cycles apply one stack of the Krieger Wave Thermal Reservoir. Now, as we all know, do size also incredibly hard because of the power levels. You've got to have your aux maxed and your weapons close to maxed, if not maxed themselves. So every 10 firing cycles, we get an increase of all subsystem power levels by 10 for 10 seconds just for firing this weapon. Anything helps in that department. So that's also good. The cannons also perform pretty good. Next... Which, here, one of these two is going to be swapped out for the Terran Task Force Dual Heavies, just because of how stupid they are. I haven't gotten reps up quite finished yet, so we're kind of waiting on that, as you'll see later. But, uh, two sets of Krieger Wave Disruptor Dual Heavy Cannons, epic out, crit DDM, damage times four. I explained what these do a minute ago on the proc. They hit very nicely, solid cannons. Honestly, I recommend Krieger Wave anything if you're doing Dusai. It just, it meshes beautifully. So, next, and I'll explain why I'm using this, but if you know, you know. The full four-piece revolutionary set, which, you know, sure, I get the nice, pretty, big, giant, hitting beam of doom electricity. I'm not even sure that could be an acronym, but yeah, that thing that makes things go boom, boom. This this thing down here. That's pretty. 
But I'm using it because it is the singular best set for Dusai in the game. It will make your life a hundred thousand times easier by having this set if you're putting a Dusai build together. Can you make it work without it? Yes. Will it be a slight pain in the ass to get the same results? Also, yes. Hopefully they put this in, like, Mud's Market or some something for players who didn't do this event to get in the future because this set is amazing. I, I can't preach enough about this set. It's so good. So, first off, we got the Deflector Array, Control, EPG, Control times 2, Drain, and EPG is the roll. Gives me also a little bit of passive Starship Stealth, but I think that's a built-in mod. Um, the key with this is when activating any beam or cannon firing mode, I've got two on here. It gives me plus 21.3 Control X and plus 21.3 EPG for 20 seconds, which is going to help my science. You're seeing where this is going now. I'm going to skip over the secondary deflector for a minute and come back to it. Next, we have the Revolutionary Impulse Engines, Epic Doubt, Mark 15, with AUX, Sex Speed 2, Speed Times 3. So, I don't... This ship doesn't really need any more turn rate. Full Impulse Mods suck, so I went for Speed Times 3 and then an AUX if my engines do go offline, because their power level is extremely low. It'll still give me 25% speed when engines are disabled. Um, and... Flight speed is just handy, again, because the the, the engine power is low. They, it does help their combat impulse engines, so they're not too bad at low engine power, but even still, I'm having to put everything into weapons and aux, so I have no shield defenses and no speed. Um, the key with this is when activating any control bridge officer ability, it gives me 31.9... Starship Weapon Specialization for 20 seconds, which, in the background, improves my critical hit chance with all my cannons and stuff. That's awesome. That's super helpful, because crit chance and stuff is a struggle when you only have so many slots to put things. So, next we have the Revolutionary Warp Core. Again, epic out, all that fun stuff. Which passively gives me 21 control expertise, and 21.3 weapon amplification, which is giving me crit severity with weapons. It's giving me plus 5 max aux power. My aux is maxed out, so it doesn't give me any additional. A little bit of EPS power transfer rate, and add 7 point... This is a big one. Add 7.5% of my aux power to my weapon power as bonus power. So because my aux is maxed, it's helping my weapon power get maxed. And then the aux battery capacitor, and finally... The Revolutionary Shield, the regen on this stinks even if you have high shield power because it's covariant shield, so just for a little smidgen of less squishiness, I re-rolled it, and you don't have to do this. It took me so much salvage. It's stupid. To cap reg, reg times four, which helps the regen as much as possible on low shield power. Even still, you can see it's only 352.4, so it's nothing to write home about. It's nothing to write not home about, to be honest. Anyway, but the key with this, besides the very nice shield cap, which I must say is kind of nice, um, is because my aux power is maxed out, I get another 15% cat 1 energy weapon damage. So you can see how this set works together. And with that, we've got the full four-piece set which is plus 23.8 damage resistance versus foes in my forward arc, plus 15.2 flight turn rate, and because I have a decent amount of crit severity, plus 53.7 exotic damage critical severity, which scales with weapon amplification. Now, that's super helpful because particle manipulator is not helping me out as much as it normally would on a build because of how much I'm sacrificing an EPG at the moment to get the balance. But again, that's kind of why we're using this. Um, the three set is, of course, the weaponized mycelium emitter. That's going to help your DPS quite a lot, too, because it's still going to hit hard with this much control and EPG. And the four set is some hull cap, which we're obviously struggling for on this ship. 
almost 4% crit chance, and then more damage out of the mycelium emitter. So that's super nice. And real quick before I forget, going over the pieces on this, more control and drain out of the two-piece on the saboteur set. And then the three set, basically when your torpedoes hit and spread two makes a lot of them hit, give it about five to ten seconds. I haven't actually timed it, and you will have a uh, another torpedo hit, basically, from the inside with the rigged time-delayed explosive. It's super nice. Lastly, going to our secondary deflector, I could have gone with the standard Crit Control X EPG, Control X 2 EPG, SA plus damage mod, but I decided to be a little weird, like with this entire build concept in general. Um, so I went with, again, the Research Lab Secondary Deflector, the Strategic Deteriorating. But instead of two Control X mods, I swapped one of them out for an Energy Damage mod. Now, it's only 6.4% Cat 1. But again, I'm trying to play that fine little balancing act on getting the most out of both sides. So I thought, well, at the end of the day, it's only pretty much maybe maybe another 10 control expertise versus that much cat one. Neither one's really going to be overly je ne sais quoi, but... At least it's something different to try. Like I said, a lot of this build is just me trying different things. Because it gets boring running the same stuff after a while, to be honest. So, I went ahead with that. So, other than that, it's, other than the energy damage mod, it's basically a standard secondary deflector. So, we'll explain how that's getting procced later on. In the back, for our... Mixed Armament Synergy, we have the House Martok and its two-piece, which is just phenomenal. The two-piece, if you didn't know, gives you crit chance and accuracy. The Omni hits pretty well, and the console is just solid all around. We'll get to that in a moment. And then a Krieger Wave Disrupted Turret that I got to pop to Epic at Mark VI, which I'm just thrilled to pieces about. Also rolled crit D damage, damage times four. I was debating about putting the biomolecular turret back here, but if I'm going to be putting the Terran Task Force cannons up here, I want at least three procs of, three possible procs of the control expertise boost. Not that it matters a ton because it's a proc, but again, it's fun to be silly for once. <laughs> then we've got our exotic particle floods, which is 20% cat 2 exotic damage. Temporal Negotiator, because I don't have Boimler on here, and I'm still not sure what I'm going to switch out for it. That's going to be a debate I'm having with myself for a while. And Red Matter Capacitor to help the power levels if they're really struggling or something. Um, then Universal Console is the House Martok Console, which is giving me more HP. And, I mean, look at that. We have two buffs of HP, and it's still only 56,000. So... Shield power, engine power, both of which are low to begin with. Shield cap and turn rate. And again, the two-piece is amazing, especially on a scatter volley where you were losing accuracy anyway. Next is opening salvo, which is 21.4 EPG, 21.4 weapon specialization. I explained weapon specialization earlier. Knocks target subsystems offline. Very helpful for getting that initial round of hits in and getting past the shields. Constriction Anchor, literally just there for the 25.3 cat to exotic damage. You can't really write home without it. Then the Saboteur Supercharger, which is giving me basically 8 control and drain, nothing fancy. I honestly could do without this console if I had like an overpowered console I could put in. But again, trying something new, and I really like that second torpedo hit. And it's giving all my weapons, and well, basically everything, plus 20 armor pen versus targets that are affected with the subsystem offline. See back to opening salvo over here. For science consoles, the auxiliary ejection assembly, because, because I only have three device slots, fitting deuterium in here is going to be very tricky, should I ever want to do it. So that gives me another 
evasive maneuvers, basically. Plus 19% cat to exotic damage and a little bit of aux and max aux power, although the max aux power isn't applying because of the warp core I have on. But that's because maximum subsystem power buffs don't stack. Anyway, the max damager on the parse, the Tholian web spinner array, if you don't have this console, I am so sorry. This thing is so stupid. It's stupidity is stupid. It's just, it's the best console I've ever seen. It hits like a truck, and then it hits like a truck again, and then it puts about another five trucks on top of that. And it hits like four foes at once. It's just, it's amazing. It's amazing. And then the Plasma Storm, which which actually, I forgot to mention, that's giving me a little Control X, and held foes get 50% Cat 2 damage against them. The Physical and the Tetrion isn't really helping me much. Anyway, Plasma Storm module... 13 EPG, 26 Control X. Gives you the big space tornado, which is gorgeous as hell. Keeps things in the damage bubble for my scatter volley to hit it. Then an exotic particle field exciter with weapon power. Now, yes, I could have gone EPG Control X on this, but again, trying something different, and these are pretty cheap on the exchange. So, like, I think I got this one for like. 4 million, maybe? So, if you're not going for an EPG roll on field exciters, they're not that hard to get, and they're still helpful. And if I get a shield heal, I get the field exciter proc, which actually helps for once, which is another plus 10 weapon power. Then, temporal disentanglement suite. This one makes more sense on this build than most other science builds I run, because it's ship-wide crit chance. Um, it's plus 5.3 aux power, plus 26.2 max shield cap, I'm getting the full 2.5% crit chance and 10% severity ship-wide on my weapons and everything because my max, uh, aux power is maxed. Well, that's awesome. And 3% shield resistance, but I always forget that part, to be honest. Um, down here, we have three vulnerability locators from the Fleet Spire rolled for Disruptor, which is giving me Disruptor damage and crit chance. One of these is going to end up swapping out for the Lorcator. Lorca's custom fire controls eventually putting that subnote there. Skills. Uh, I haven't finished out my skills yet. Just because, like, it takes forever to get spec points. But anyway, it's going to be temp op strategist. As per usual, you could run something like temp op intel, or if you're feeling really crazy, temp op pilot. That could be a fun combo. Anyway, so temp op strategist. Space traits. We have conservation of energy. Every time I'm struck by energy damage, I get 10% bonus cat 2 damage on my exotic abilities. Stacks three times. Particle manipulator, basically ensuring my exotic abilities crit more. Gains from my EPG stat. Um, believe it or not, I actually got a bad roll of crits on the parse I'm going to show you later, so... Yeah. Fleet Coordinator, which is 2% all damage, cat 2 per team member, up to 10%. Context is for kings. If you didn't take dam it if you didn't excuse me, take damage, it's 10% cat 2. If you did, it's 30 all damage resistance. Enlightened, a little bit of exotic damage and hull regen. Intelligent Agent Attaché, which is when I crit, restores my captain abilities, which helps my sub-nuke and stuff. Terran Targeting Systems, 15% crit severity, not much to that. Cannon Training, this needs to be upgraded to Superior Cannon Training, but I'm kind of running low on stuff to get more fleet marks and stuff at the moment with, so I'm slowly working my way through that. Fragment of AI Tech. This is also another must, must, must for due size. It gives you 30% Cat 1 energy weapon damage based on control expertise, and then another 50 control expertise. And then this is a must for any science build ever, is unconventional systems, because each control bridge officer ability reduces your recharge to your universal consoles. So, now onto the Starship traits. First off is Terran Machinations. 
this is the trait that started it all on my thought process with this. This is the trait that makes it work. This is why I'm running Attack Pattern Lambda, which we'll get to in a bit. But basically, when I activate an att my Attack Pattern Lambda, or any Attack Pattern buff ability, I gain 30% Cat 1 exotic damage. And when I activate any Control uh, Bridge Officer abilities, I gain 10% Firing Cycle Haste for energy weapons. This is the definition of the balance. It's not a great buff on either side, but it's helping both sides equally, and it's a very solid buff. Then we have Black Alert, which I am going to swap out for probably Entwined Tactical Matrices. Because that way, Scatter Volley and Torque Threat will be up 100% of the time. Which will help that damage balance out, since most of my other traits are science. But at the moment, when I activate my Overload, it's giving me a little bit more damage out of the Spore Duplicates. Nothing fancy, but it's better than anything else I have at the moment. Next is a new toy I got, which is a bit weird how I'm using it, but it works real well. Is Exodus Acta Probat, which whenever I activate Jam Sensors 3 over here, it's giving me a little bit of stealth, 15% Cat 2 weapon damage for 20 seconds, and 40 control expertise. I'm really just using it for the bottom two here. I'm, the stealth doesn't really mean much for me. It would work better. Everybody knows how it is on an Intel team build, but it's literally just here for the signs and bonus damage buffs here. Then we have improved gravity well, because again, I don't have Boimlers, which lengthens my gravity well, reduces the recharge to global, and gives everything the primary target of the grav well negative 20 damage resistance rating. Then we have Overpowered and Overgunned, which I would be swapping out for Spore-Infused Anomalies. Which I do have, I just need to finish leveling the ship on this tune, and it's been a busy time for me lately. So that's going to be Spore-Infused Anomalies, but as it is, it's helping my cannons a hair. Then Temporal Anchor, which is not a bad trait, but I'll probably be swapping it out for Improved Photonic Officer, which will help my exotic damage and my survivability a bit at the end of the day. One thing to note for rep traits, my reps are only rank 2. They're currently leveling up because I just got this tuned to 65 two weeks ago, if you can believe that. So, rep traits are what can help me at the moment, which is Crit Severity, Cat 2 Exotic Damage, Crit Chance, and Cat 1 damage overall and a little bit of speed there's nothing else i really like more of my options at the moment don't even have any active space reps so we'll go ahead and skip those as for stations we have gravel three jam targeting sensors three charge particle burst which i'm going to be switching out for very cold in space two i believe it is this was just kind of a placeholder and then Lambda 1, which allows me to open this up for the Torp Spread 2 and the Beam Overload 1 to help that beam in the back on Mixed Armament Synergy, which is also helping my accuracy with the cannons. Emergency to Aux 1, Mixed Armament Synergy 1, Narrow Sensor Bands 1. That's helping my energy weapons quite a bit. That's helping my um, science get along and max out at 130, I think it is. Up here, Scatter Volley 2, Torp Spread 2, and Overload 1. Those should be pretty straightforward, just helping my torpedoes, cannons, and the beam in the back. Stabilizing Resonance Beam 2, Photonic Officer 1 for cooldowns, and Tachyon Beam 1, which I believe... Yeah, both the Resonance Beam and the Tachyon Beam are proccing my secondary deflector, which is going to be one of your biggest sections of damage on any build. So keep that in mind. And like I said, reps aren't finished yet, so that's that's pretty much the build. So I am going to go ahead and show you that 
parse real quick, and then, like I said, this is iteration one, so we'll be back with more videos on this build in the future, so that's the build. Okay, welcome into the parse section of this video as we're closing out here. I know it's been a fairly lengthy video, and thank you all for sticking with me. Um, this was an ISE run I just did on a whim with some of my friends the other day, as you can see. 241.64k, way more than I was expecting out of this build in its current state. Um, as for why Hunter up here only has 484 damage, uh, it was like, I think, 4 in the morning for him, so we're pretty sure he just kind of dozed off. So, <laughs> anyway, so pretty much ignore him and just think of it as a 4-man. Uh, Aura was our tank over here. Uh, TJ Galactromer was doing, I think, more science, I believe. Um, yeah, he was doing science on top of me, so take that, too. This is Deucey comp competing with Rossi. And then Lockhart, which is Register Endeavor Gaming, was doing, I believe... Yeah, his main beam overload build which he loves that thing to death that's on his inquiry. As you can see, it's quite potent. Anyway, so up here, um, I had an opening of almost 900,000. So that was pretty solid. You can see it just kind of balances out up here in the 250s. I didn't I'm not I don't have room for delayed overload cascade, so I didn't have all these big max one hits that TJ had. He's really, really good at those. He's taught me just about everything I know. So if you ever need a brain to pick, go hit him up. Trust me. He's a magician. He's literally a magician. Um anyway, so going over the parse. 30, basically 33% crit rate. Max one hit of 755,887. Target debuff of basically 173%. Flank rate when I actually was like going with stuff was basically 60% with my energy weapons. It was a bit of a chaotic run because none of us had done an ISC in a while. But anyway, just going through... You can read it on this list and pause the video. Chain web projection did the most. Then the secondary deflector, pets, which mainly consisted of the Badlands Cyclones. Actually, I had weaponized helical torsion on here at a point. Heh. <laughs> Took that off, I think, in the last couple days. Uh, then Gravwell 3. Then the cannons and the torpedo. I stole somebody's concentrate firepower. And then, anyway, just go on down the list. And that's kind of how the parse ended up. The max one hit was from, um, if I can find it, somewhere in here. The weaponized mycelium, mycelium emitter, which again, like I said, that's, it hit once and did almost 4.3k. Just bear that in mind. But anyway, that's the parse. That's the build. If you have any questions, feel free to DM me. If you really want to go in depth with it, come join my Discord and ask me about it there, and I will seriously dig into it hard with you. This is an awesome build. I love it a ton, and I can't wait to show you the improvements I make to it over the next couple months. So, with that all said, this is Doc Lightning with another build video, and I will see you guys later. Peace out, everybody. Thank <laughs> you.